we taping? Mm -hmm. Okay. Take one. Hi there, I'm Bill Casalino, and running the camera is my lovely wife, Joanne. And we have a plasma generating device that will produce plasma flame at a spark plug. I know you've been trying to do that for a long time. Uh, just got it running today. I'm going to talk briefly about it before I put it in the car so and show you that it works. And then when I get it in the car, we're going to give it a test drive tomorrow. And uh, I'll give you the blueprints or the schematics and everything. So basically what we have is a series of uh, diodes. Can you see the diodes in here? I think there's way too many. I haven't done tests on them yet. But I'll give you the number of the diodes. There's only about 15 or $20 worth of diodes here if you get them from the right place. Got them run through a fuse. I have a halfway bridge rectifier, which is actually five of those same diodes. And I have a microwave oven transformer that is in series with the line input uh, as a ballast to ballast the input. I can run it without that, but it uh, it'll burn up the spark plug like a welding electrode. The ideal thing here would be a sensible reactor. I have all of the um, spark plugs wired. You see the spark plug here. Um, I have the lead for the DC voltage coming down. Uh, onto the onto the tip of the spark plug in here, so the spark plug has uh, both the high voltage and the uh, rectified 110. And this fell out, but that's okay. Okay, so I've got all four of them hooked up. Number four cylinder now. The plug wire is pulled off of it, and it's pushed into a uh, old dirty spark plug I had laying around. And I'm going to start the start the engine and you'll see the normal spark then I'm going to plug this device in right here and you'll see that we get the, the plasma spark for burning water hopefully Okay, Bill and Joanne back again, and this is, what day is it? Saturday. September 6th. September 6th, 2008. This is the day after the night before I showed you the um, sparky thing last night. Anyway, we now have a plasma flame lacing into all four plugs, so we're running on plasma. Um, I hooked it up on one cylinder and it still worked and then I hooked it up on four cylinders and what happened is I forgot about uh, cross feed on the spark plug so I had to fill uh, build a little cross feed protector but I'll show you that. Anyway I mounted the an amp, mounted the, I've got an on off switch and I mounted the MOT down in the firewell. This is a 1976 Volkswagen uh, camper bus. It's a uh, standard two liter air cooled uh, it's uh, fuel injected, it's uh, air controlled fuel injection. It's a Bosch product, works pretty good. I'm not sure how I'm gonna put the water in it yet, but uh, we're gonna get her done. Anyway, if you come in here, there you see down here the, um, you get a good shot of that? I see. Right okay. there? Yeah. Okay, you can see the um, back feed protector I built. This is all the diodes I had left, and it might need a few more because I'm getting a little bit of a uh, miss. But each one of these goes to one of the plugs. This is one, two, three, and four. It goes right down to the top of the plug, uh, and it's in parallel with the uh, high voltage wire. And I'm going to fix this up a little bit, but uh, 
this is the input from off the top of here and if if you uh, when I show you the schematic in uh, the next on the next video I'll show you the schematic you'll see that this is wired backwards and it shouldn't work but we are getting plasma and um, the interesting thing is the um, inverter that I have registers uh, zero amps current flow and we know that the um, battery isn't connected during the spark so uh, the question is where's the energy coming from so uh, we're gonna we've got to keep working because we're leaving Saturday or sorry, Friday this coming Friday for the Midwest and I'm gonna try have a little bit of water into it by the time we leave uh, we'll make videos along the way maybe and keep you updated but in the meantime I'm gonna keep working on this and put the schematic together for you so we'll see you next time Okay, you've gotten a close-up of it. You can see here the uh, extension cord coming back from the inverter, plugged into a, a zip cord pigtail, very light gauge. Um, the hot wire from the pigtail, from the AC, comes into a microwave, microwave oven transformer, a MOT and just goes through the primary. The secondary isn't hooked up. It's just a bias for the current. Now without the MOT in there, we get uh, maximum current flow. Still at a tenth of an amp, but uh, enough to actually melt weld the end of the spark plug together. So the MOT is just basically biasing the current. I don't know how it biases it because it doesn't change from a tenth of an amp. But, uh, so we've got the positive side coming through the MOT. Okay, and then we've got a uh, capacitor across the input. Got that so far? The positive side also goes directly to the engine block. So we got 120 volts AC or DC directly to the engine block. It's 120 volts DC. It's rectified through these diodes on the ground leg. This is the ground leg, the one with the knot in it. It's rectified through the diodes. Uh, it's uh, buffered across the uh, capacitor so that we eliminate the spaces in the negative, uh, si the negative part of the sine wave. I have a fuse in here. I don't have the fuse in the schematic, and I have a switch in here. I don't have the switch in the schematic. I don't usually put fuses and switches in schematics because that's kind of a no-brainer. But you can do whatever you want with it. The negative side, the ground side, negative 120 volts DC comes through a series of diodes there are 60 diodes in series and there's two banks of them you don't need two banks I didn't know how much current I was going to draw but these are uh, 1N 5408s so they're fairly cheap you can get uh, 150 of them for under 20 bucks link is on the website and they're rated at uh, 800 volts each, uh, 3 amps each. So in series I have 3 amps uh, through each one. The parallel gives me 6 amps. Nowhere near that current draw through it, but like I say, I over-designed it. You do need the series because you need to keep the high voltage from seeing a path to ground uh, through this uh, device. And a path to ground is easier than the spark plug gap. So. If you don't have a good bank to put to block the high voltage, you're going to you won't get a spark. It'll follow the easiest path to ground. And that's it. That's as simple as it is. Now, down inside the engine compartment here,
I have a, another bank. You can't see them all. Actually, I can hold it up here and you can. Oops. That didn't work too well. I just got to tighten that up a little bit. This is another bank of diodes. Um, the ground side comes out, the DC ground side comes out through this single wire and goes down and feeds the spark plug. If you're only using one spark plug, you don't need these. Uh, but all the spark plugs are hooked directly at the top, at the anode, to this single wire uh, that comes in here. So these diodes are simply uh, to prevent uh, crossfire in the spark plugs because the spark plugs are all the top of the spark plugs are all hooked to the same wire so all this does is prevent uh, crossfire like I say if you're going to use a single plug on the bench you don't need to to have these but if you can put it in a vehicle with more than one plug you're going to have to prevent crossfire and over here you can see this is the um, airflow sensor this is the intake uh, hose and I have two misters here these are uh, half a gallon an hour at uh, 30 pounds I only have one of them hooked up now because it runs quite well on just one with gas uh, it doesn't run for crap with two of them without gas and I just don't have time to mess with it right now but the important thing is that it that's that plasma spark will fire uh, the water mist. It's just a matter of uh, fine-tuning it and, and getting it running. This is another bank of diodes. Um, the ground side comes out, the DC ground side comes out through this single wire and goes down and feeds the spark plug. If you're only using one spark plug, you don't need these. Uh, but all the spark plugs are hooked directly at the top, at the anode to this single wire uh, that comes in here. So these diodes are simply uh, to prevent uh, crossfire in the spark plugs because the spark plugs are all, the top of the spark plugs are all hooked to the same wire. So all this does is prevent uh, crossfire. Like I say, if you're going to use a single plug on the bench, you don't need to, to have these. But if you can put it in a vehicle with more than one plug. And finally, this is a shot into the engine compartment. This is the uh, positive wire, the hot wire. Comes down from the uh, from the DC uh, rectifier. Ties directly to the engine block. This spark plug is the one you saw in the um, in the lead in. Hasn't changed since I did the video last night. All I did was pull number four uh, plug and hook it up to this uh, test plug so that I can show you what a nice uh, arc it made. And if you look carefully, you can see this wire here is the uh, current wire, theoretically. Actually, I call it the dipole wire. It comes down into a connector. I cut away the side of the plug and uh, put a connector right over the top of the spark plug and then plug the spark plug down on top of it. So it's really very simple. There's nothing exotic here at all. Okay, that's about it. Um, the schematic will be published on uh, my website. I'm also going to uh, share it with uh, panacea.org. And anybody else that needs it, this has to get out to the public. It has to be spread as widely and as quickly as possible because we don't want it stopped. The uh, implications here are pretty profound. That plasma arc puts out a pretty good uh, electromagnetic pulse. Each time it fires, there's energy there that's uh, available. There's also the possibility of using that this circuit um, I've played around with uh, hydroxy, so there's a possibility of using this circuit uh, uh, to produce hydroxy gas. Uh, I have no idea how it would work, but uh, if I can produce that plasma arc for a tenth of an amp, 
something should happen. So food is a lot to play around with. The important thing is that it gets out and it gets out quickly. As I said, the uh, with the amount of current draw that I'm uh, experiencing with this system right here and the improvements in performance that I've uh, experienced with this little uh, camper van uh, for, for very reasonable, very easy uh, circuitry, uh, very low cost, you could build these for any car and improve, uh, improve mileage without doing anything else. And if you did uh, this circuit and just introduced water, uh, water injection and left the gas there, you might be able to lean out the gas and, and run on a mixture. If we um, add uh, ethanol or uh, alcohol to the to the water, who knows? There's a lot of possibilities here. It's pretty exciting for me, and I'm sure it is for you too. So, build the circuit, test it out, uh, join the forum. I have uh, taken this dipole principle and applied it to magnets, and uh, it appears on the surface that there's a way to get free energy out of magnets using this dipole principle. I won't go into detail about it, but uh, that's going to be my next project. So if, uh, if you download the video um, from my website, uh, think about uh, purchasing the uh, book, The Path. It's in PDF format and uh, the binaural uh, files. They'll uh, help you think outside the box a little bit. Don't cost much and it'll help my work. Thanks for watching.